Hey everybody, Phil from Two Forks Woodworks. So I was watching a buddy of mine who doesn't really know much about using circular saws uh, the other day. He was out in the field. He's actually a painter, but he has a little saw and he went to make a cut and he did three things with the circular saw, or as I call it, a skill saw, right away that were mistakes and uh, caused the saw to sort of violently kick back at him. And I had been thinking about sort of making a do's and don'ts video about using a skill saw. So at that point I thought, hmm, maybe I'm a little too late. But anyway, I showed him all of the things that, that he had done wrong. And uh, so I'll show you or tell you um, the things that he did wrong and hopefully you're not going to make those same mistakes. Um, these are great tools. They, you know, I use these all the time. Most people do use them all the time. But you really, there are a few things that you need to know about it, and there's a couple tricks that you can do some fun stuff with, and I'll try and show you all of those. But first of all, when, when you're buying one of these, and I've got my guard pin just to demonstrate, but I'll take that up. When you're buying one of these, there's, there's not a lot of things to really keep in mind. Um, really, I would just pick it up if you can, unless it's like bolted to the wall like they do at the Home Depot and Lowe's. Pick it up and feel it and just feel what, what it's like side to side and if it has good balance in your hand. That, that's important, particularly if you're going to be using it quite a bit. Uh, if this is going to be your career, then I would make sure that it feels, feels good. The other thing really, and it's kind of minor, but is what side of your hand, basically, the body of the saw is on. So I'm right-handed, and so when I hold on to this, the body of the saw is to the left of my hand and the blade's to the right. Now they, they make them, I'm just gonna switch it around for demonstration purposes, the opposite way. So that the body, when I'm holding on to it, imagine this is the back of the saw, when I'm holding on to it, the body's on the right and the blade's on the left. Now, the good thing about a saw like this is that when you're cutting, you can see your line, well, it's going to be the opposite, but you can see your line right there when you're when you're making your cut. So the, the line as you're making your cut is right in front of you. Whereas when I make my cuts, I've got to lean over the saw in order to see my line. The thing I like about this style of saw is even though I have to lean over to see it, when I'm making a cut, I'm usually holding on with my left hand because I'm right-handed, and the body of the saw is on the piece that's going to stay, not the piece that's going to fall off. So if I were to try and do that to keep the body of the saw on the piece that I want, not the piece that's going to fall off, then I can't hold on to it. And I never, ever want to stick my arm behind the saw because the saw, if it kicks back, you just don't want that, obviously. So this is something to take in, into consideration. Little, if I think this is good for left-handers because then they can hold on to the, the piece that's not going to fall off with their right hand and make their cut. So you think about it, left hand, right hand, I don't know. I've been debating, debating people about that for a for hundred years. So back to the things that you really don't want to do when you're using a circular saw. And the thing that my buddy did that a lot of people who don't use circular saws do is they never adjust the depth of their blade. Now I'm gonna pin my guard up. One thing also that don't ever do and sometimes when you're making a cut on a 45, uh, the guard will, will bind up a little bit uh, if you don't hold it forward. I understand that, but as soon as you make that cut, if you have your guard pinned, take it out because it's really dangerous. If somebody comes along and uses your saw and the guard's pinned like that so the guard can't come back down, chances are good that they're going to just set the thing down and it's going to run away or worse, run over their foot. So if, if you're one of those people that wants to pin the guard a lot, do it on the, on the job where you're the only one or make sure people are aware, don't use my saw, something like that. But pinning the guard is really pretty dangerous. The, the guards are there for a reason. It's to protect you. So don't get nuts about it. But for demonstration purposes, I'm going to pin the guard. Anyway, this is, this is what a lot of people do. When they, when they first start using circular saws, they don't adjust the depth. So they have all of this blade sticking down underneath the board and what the same thing that my buddy did. What happens is there's so much friction from all of that blade that's sticking down below that the saw wants to grab on and it's gonna kick, kick the saw back, and which is exactly what happened to my friend. So when you're going to make a cut, always, always make sure that you adjust that depth. So you basically have, you know, a quarter inch, I took a guess, yeah, something like that. About a quarter inch of the blade sticking through. This is probably the number one safety feature 
um, and also one that'll make it a lot easier for you to make the cut. It's such a battle when you have all that blade sticking through. So just adjust it so you got about a quarter, three eighths, even half or whatever. Just make sure you don't have two inches sticking through. I had a guy working for me. He was cutting a sheet of half inch plywood on some sawhorses and he's cutting and it goes fine. And then it gets hard and then it goes fine again and then it gets hard and there's smoke coming off of it. You know, it was, it was, a, it was a mess and he couldn't figure out why. Well, he figured it out when he took the plywood up after he made the cut and the sawhorses both fell right to the ground because he had cut right through both of the sawhorses. I mean, anyway, it's a lesson. Don't let all that blade go to the bottom of your cut. Make sure you adjust it so you have, you know, a half inch or a quarter inch or something. Probably the number one safety feature. The other thing that he did, again, this is sort of preference, but he was cutting with the body off of the piece that was going to fall off. So as he's cutting along, he's got a mile of blade sticking out through the bottom. And this piece is the one that falls off. So as it's falling off, he, he's letting his saw tilt a little bit. And then all of that blade caught the cut and out it comes. Shoots, comes shooting out. So make sure that I'd like to have the body of the saw, the weight of the saw over the piece that's not going to fall off. That way when the piece does fall off, the saw doesn't want to go with it. Okay, again, some people can make the cut like this so that the body is falling off here. I don't love to do that, I can, but I have a lot of experience. If you don't, don't do it that way. But try and always make sure that you have the body of the saw on the piece that's not going to be falling off. Another thing that my buddy did is he had been rejected from the cut. So he goes and he's got about an inch left that he needs to cut. And so he puts the saw in, again, with the mile of blade sticking out through the thing, pushes the saw right up against the point where that needs to be cut, and then pulls the trigger. So, of course, that's not going to work. So the, the saw hit that thing in the front, twisted the saw, and he gets rejected for a second time. Out the saw comes. You should have seen the look on his face. It was tremendous. He just couldn't believe that this thing was coming out as fast as it was coming out. The way you do that, if you haven't finished a cut, you've got a little bit left, and for whatever reason you, you, the saw has come out, you want to start with the saw out of the cut. Okay, you're pressing down firmly on the front. You've got it lined up so it's going to go right back into the cut. And then you start your saw. Make sure that it's spinning as fast as it can spin. And then drop it down, almost as if you're using a chop saw. And that's the only way to do that. The only way to plunge, that's called a plunge cut. And that's the only way to do it. With the front down tight and dropping the saw down. If you try and just drop the saw down and on a plunge cut, it, it, forget it. it you, you'll want it, it, It'll come back so fast it'll make your head spin. Don't do it from the back either. I've never seen anybody try this. I don't even really know what would happen. Just don't do it. The only way to do that is to start with the front of the saw, firmly down on the workpiece, make sure that the blade's spinning as fast as it can spin, and then slowly lower it in and finish making your cut. Again, don't pin your guard, okay? It's, it's bad. I don't even like doing it for demonstration purposes. And always make sure that, you know, the thing's moving freely. Sometimes chips do get stuck up in there and it will, the guard will be pinned up and that's dangerous. So make sure the thing's working the way that it's supposed to work. And always, before you finish your cut and you're about to put your saw down, take a peek and make sure something's not stuck in there. Because if, if something is and you just set it down without looking and the guard's up, when you set that saw down, it's going to run right towards you. It's going to come right back at you and hopefully not over your foot. So make sure this guard is working and it's always down when it can be down. So there's a couple other techniques that I, I'll show you and um, I'm going to have to set up something else so you can actually see it. I'll make a couple cuts and show you what I'm talking about. So let's move over to a different spot. Okay, so real quickly, I'll show you how to make these cuts. Again, this is pretty much for people who don't have a lot of experience with circular saws. If you do, you obviously know how to do this stuff, so it might not be worth your time to watch. I hope you do anyway. So I'll explain a couple things and then I'll move the camera so that you can actually see it up close and, and get the understanding of what's actually happening. But so before I make my cut, of course, as I've said a hundred times, I want to make sure that uh, my blade's adjusted exactly to the depth. So I just want it to be, you know, an eighth, a quarter, three eighths, whatever below the, the thing that I'm making the cut on. Then 
when you're making a cut, you want to start, you want to get the thing lined up, but you don't want the blade to be able to hit the workpiece because you, whenever you make a cut, you want the blade to be spinning as fast as possible. If, if you're up against it, when you start, it's going to slap it. It's not going to make the cut. It's going to be not good. So just make sure, get it set up, move it back just a tiny bit, and then make your cut. I'll show you the plunge cut too, or if you're halfway through a cut and you need to, need to pull the saw back out of there, I'll show you that as well. And the one thing you don't want to do ever when, when, you're in a, when you're making a cut and you're in there, don't try and go backwards with the saw. It, it's not a good idea. It usually ends with the saw trying to kick out on you. So if you're, for whatever reason, you realize there's a nail right in front of you and you have to get out of the cut, one thing you can do is just let, the, let go of the trigger and let the saw spin its way out. Make sure it's not too tight against it or it's going to buckle a little bit. Just make sure you're just back a tiny bit and let the saw just die out and then take it out. Don't ever try and lift the saw straight out. It's sort of the same thing as putting it straight in. It's not going to work out real well for you. So if you have to get out of the cut, just front down nice and tight and just lift the saw out and then let the guard go and let the saw come to a stop. Not too tricky, but it's the only way really to do that. Do not go backwards to try, and, to try and get out of a cut. And finally, I'll show you just the plunge cut, which is again, front down real tight, saw spinning as fast as it can go, and then just slowly lower it down into the workpiece. It's kind of just imagine it's just a chop saw, and that's your pivot point. Hold it nice and tight, and down it goes. So now I'll move the camera a little bit, so I'll um, do all of those things, and you can see how practically it's actually done. All right? Plug it in first. They don't work without power. Okay, got it? That makes sense? Did my demonstrations show you how it's all done? So hopefully it was clear. Um, leave some comments if you want me to show you something else. There's a couple other techniques that you can do, other tricks that you can do, uh, like planing boards with the circular saw that I was going to show. But honestly, I think that might be irresponsible of me to show you that because it's sort of an advanced technique. And if you're watching this video on how to sort of, you know, buy a circular saw and how to, how to use one, then I don't want to show you that technique. Ask one of your carpenter friends and maybe he or she could explain it to you. But I don't think it would be right for me to show you that because it's actually kind of a little bit dangerous. And unless you have a lot of uh, experience, I don't think you should try it. So I'm morally not going to show you that one, but it's cool. You should learn it. I hope this video helped. Uh, I hope uh, it made you more, will make you more comfortable using one of these. Uh, the number one thing probably, hold on. Hold on tight because they do kick, but they're super, super useful tools. And uh, if you're going to be doing just about anything, one of these will, will be helpful to you. So I hope you enjoyed the video and stay peaceful and I'll see you in the next one.